Hi creatives! Psychographics are one of the best ways to make sure that the brands you create have a really big impact. You've probably heard about demographics before, which is when we use things like age or income to try to create a persona for the business. Psychographics take a much deeper approach where you look at the psychology and motivations of why someone would buy something and all the little micro decisions that make up that journey to eventually making a purchase. A lot of the purchasing choices that we make day to day are actually based on things like habits and how we see ourselves and how we want other people to see us. Basically how those purchases shape our identity. We often choose to support brands because of how they make us feel or how we think we will appear to other people. Think about big fashion brands or maybe if you're choosing to buy at a grocery store that has more ethical produce for example. Here's a great example of a company that used this to their benefit. A lot of people who fly find it quite frustrating that each step of the process takes so much time, like going to the airport, waiting at the airport, getting your bags, for example. This is something that a Scottish train company used to their advantage because they realized that on certain routes, like going from Edinburgh to London, for example, it was actually faster and cheaper to take the train. They used humor and the fact that they really understood their customers' psychographics and motivations to create ads that really were showcasing how much easier and more flexible and smooth it was to take the train rather than fly. When we know the actual motivations behind someone making a choice, we can actually adapt our marketing really quickly and the branding in seeing how we can address those issues and not focus on the things that we think will be important, but the things that will actually make a difference for our customers. So how do you actually understand the psychographics of an audience? First, talk to your clients. Really try to understand what they already know about their customers and how they learned this. Did they talk to their customers? Do they get reviews? Have they seen different conversations between people? Try to really get to the bottom of how they know this. Next up, you can use surveys or in-depth interviews where you really ask deep questions that are very pinpointed to understand the purchasing journey and the motivations. So interviews are great because you can ask follow-up questions and you can get really, really deep into the reasoning for different choices that people make. But surveys are also really good because you can cover a much broader range of people. So interviews take a lot, much longer time and with surveys, you're able to have a much wider range of people. So those two can be really complementary in themselves. Lastly, don't underestimate social media. People tend to leave very honest comments on social media posts, on review sites, and people might comment both things that they really like and things that they really didn't like. So make sure that you're both checking on your client's company and profiles, but also check on competitors so that you can see, okay, they did this really well and we can use that in our marketing, for example. So let's look at an example together. Let's say you're designing a brand for a personal trainer. The demographic data might have sounded something like this. A woman, age 35, lives at a city center and earns 45,000 a year. But what actually motivates this person to buy? Because that information alone is quite difficult to make any choices from. So to find out the psychographics, you could ask the personal trainer, either if they have customers that they can ask why they chose to have a personal trainer, if they've heard maybe reasons before, or maybe they have colleagues or people they look up to that they can ask about their customers. Another thing you can do is to look at social media for other personal trainers, because sometimes people post success stories. So they might post, here's a person that came to me for a personal training session, and now they've achieved this outcome. So that's a great way for you to find out why someone actually wanted a personal trainer. The third thing you can do is to run surveys or quizzes. You can make it really fun, maybe offer rewards for people to answer why they wanted a personal trainer or why they might consider a personal trainer. And you also want to look at the overall kind of idea of the pain points, the life that they live, anything that you think will be helpful. So if we instead now look at the psychographics, they might look something like this. Mom of two, one toddler and one eighth month old. She used to go to the gym on and off, but after having two kids, she feels like she needs a little bit more support to understand how to adapt exercises and find new and fun things that she enjoys in the gym. She wants someone non-judgmental, who is really encouraging and who understands her body and her expectations. And she's also looking for a standing appointment so that she has a set time that she knows she's gonna go to the gym so that she doesn't feel like she has all these other things like cleaning or uh, going out to the park that she feels takes priority. So having a set appointment is important. 
So here we can see how the psychographics offer so much more information than just the demographics alone. And we can actually use this information to apply to our branding, our messaging and our marketing. So for example, a personal trainer who only knew about the demographics might have tried to sell their services something like this. Affordable weekly one hour personal trainer sessions with weights or machines. While the gym that actually knows about the psychographics of their customers might sell it in this way helping you stay consistent and exploring workouts you always wanted to try. And this information can be used to apply to everything in terms of visuals, like what photography you choose or using hierarchy to lift out the most important features for that specific customer. I think having an example is always really helpful, so I hope that made things a little bit more clear. If you want to learn more about effective brand messaging and how to create a strong brand, have a look at this messaging strategy called Head, Hand and Heart. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.